Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about the FireRox game engine. That's F-Y-R-O-X. This is a Rust-powered game engine, and you can see it in front of you right now. And the number one thing you're going to notice about FireRox is that it has an editing environment. So if you're looking for like a more a Godot or Unity-esque experience, but you want to work with Rust, well, I guess you could get the Rust plugin for Godot. Uh, but this actually is a Rust game engine where you script in Rust, you write it in Rust, everything works in in Rust. So if you are all about Rust, but you want editing tools, this is what you're all about. We're looking at it today because 0.27 was just recently released. Uh, this is the editor. You can see you can use it to create all kinds of uh, objects in your world. Uh, you can run your game directly from right here. You got 3D placement of objects. Uh, you've got your scene graph available over here. You've got various different tools. It is extensible via a plug-in mechanism so that you can extend this to do uh, whatever you need it to do. So if you want to have an editing environment in Rust, this guy is for you. And uh, this one was previously known as Rage 3D. Now, if you're looking for a Rust game engine right now, I don't know that any are really commercially ready. They're both still under, the two major ones I would recommend are still pretty much under active development right now. Don't think I would use them for a production game, but if you've got a bit of time or your... Um, a bit willing to walk on the wild side, you're going to either want to go with Firox if you want to have the editing environment, or you're going to want to go with Bevy, which is an ECS-based engine. So a little bit more about Firox itself. Let's go jump in, take a look at the web page. So 0.27 was just released. We'll get back to that in just a second. If you want to check out Firox, it's available at firox.rs. This is, of course, an open source and completely free game engine. In terms of features and functionality, you can see it's got 2D and 3D support, 2D and 3D physics. It is multi-platform platform being Windows, Linux, Mac, and web. Uh, high quality renderer, advanced user interface. I believe the entire editor is written in Firox as well. Um, there is support for plugin and there's a scripting extension language as well. And uh, sorry, scripting extending API. And you can script in Rust and run it uh, in the editor if you so wish. Again, you can also extend it using custom plugins. Uh, it's got binaural sound system. It's got animation system and a full scene graph. Of course, the big thing is the editor. So this is the big part of what sets Firox apart from the alternatives out there. Um, but it's got a number of different features uh, for sure. Again, it is still pretty early in its development, so I don't think I would try to create a commercial game using Firox right now. Uh, you can see a couple of games out there are currently in development using Firox. Uh, I don't know how many of these things have actually uh, shipped at this point in time. It's still pretty early. Uh, you'll also find a decent number of examples up here. And another nice thing is they actually have a book for getting you up and started. And they generally update this along with all of the release updates. So uh, if you're looking to try and get started with this engine, well, a lot of open source projects, you're kind of on your own here. You have a very solid manual that walks you through pretty much everything you need to know, which is definitely nice. Um, again, 0.27 was just released. What's actually new in this release? Well, one of the things that you saw uh, was this, the uh, demo. We saw here Fish Folly, uh, which you can go ahead and run, by the way, up here. Uh, it's kind of a, like a 3D platformer, as you see right here. This guy has a very traumatic look on his face. And yeah, so that is the style of game that they've got. It's a, it's a much nicer demo, kind of gives you an idea of how to set things up, how to set up physics and so on, how the game works, how to set up the scripting and logic and so on. Uh, so nice little example to work with is now available called Fish Folly. It is its own project. I'll show you that in just a minute. Um, they also change at compile time reflection. This is used basically so the editors can look at runtime at what properties of objects are. So changes to that regard. Uh, the plugin system was refractor, refractored. I can't speak today. Uh, as was the scripting system. Uh, so we've got some improvements there as well. One thing I very much appreciate in this day and age is the editor now has high DPI support. So if you're running... Uh, you know, uh, on a laptop, a 15 inch laptop with a 4K display, uh, you don't need to have supervision in order to use it. And that is definitely nice. I think every application in 2022 should have high DPI support. So that's definitely nice to see. So you can see the various different UI scalings in effect. Uh, improvements to the uh, joint physics improvements, improvements to the 2D system. The UI got some uh, improvements as well, including bit field uh, UIs for individual bit masking. Uh, editor got some improvements, including uh, debug visual. So now shows more information about scene nodes that do not have graphical representations, things like uh, lights, uh, sound sources, and so on. 
Um, we got the asset previewer in here. Newly created cameras enabled by default. Uh, framework was removed as replaced with plugins. So don't use framework anymore. Use the plugin system. Uh, there is a template generator, a simple command line interface to assist you in creating a skeletal project to get you up and running. So it kind of gives you this basic setup. S creating a project is brutally simple anyways, but nice to have a little uh, thing. And as I mentioned, they have their uh, book kind of is updated as they go. So it's got a lot of improvements in there. So there's new coverage of the plugin system changes. And then we've got some other chapters were added, things like ray casting, render quality, and so on. And then a number of other smaller changes throughout. So that is Fire engine uh, 0.27 release was released earlier this month. It's been out for a week or two at this point in time. Um, if you're interested in checking it out, as I mentioned earlier on, it is an open source engine. Uh, so basically just come on to the, the GitHub repository and clone it. You're going to have to have the Rust tool change and cargo installed. Uh, and you're going to need to have Oh, no, that was Bevy. You don't need to have the newest version, I don't think, for this one, but uh, it's always good to have it anyways. Um, you can see here it is under the MIT license. So, yeah, it was 11 days ago that this release was done. Um, and if you're interested in checking out the new uh, Fish Folly example, I will have this linked in the linked article down below as well. Uh, probably a nice place to jump in and get started to figure out how to actually go about doing things. So uh, come on in here. You can find the source code for controlling things is all available here. All of your game logic is is in Rust. Um, again, you do have the uh, levels open up. If you want to open them up, the com cargo command is down here. Now, one important thing to realize is Fish Folly, this repository, needs to be in the same subfolder as uh, that you installed the uh, repository to. So when you install uh, Firefox in the same directory that this gets installed, install Fish Folly. So that's the only set, the only necessary glitch you're going to have there. It's kind of going to, so Fish Folly, when it builds, looks for uh, its parent directory for the Firefox directory to be there. So uh, make sure that you set up that relationship. This is, of course, MIT licensed as well. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, if you want to do uh, Rust-based, uh, especially 3D game development right now, you have one of two choices, really. You've got... Uh, Firefox Engine, uh, which again, good choice. A uh, nice thing about it is there is a full scene or edit editor. By the way, it used to be called Rage 3D. Uh, they changed that name. I actually liked Rage 3D better than Firefox, but uh, Firefox is growing on me, so sure. Uh, but if you're wondering what happened to Rage, well, this is what happened to Rage. Uh, but Firefox, if you want to have that editing environment, and if you don't, the other one you're probably going to want to check out is Bevy. Bevy is more code focused in its approach, uh, ECS based. I actually find Bevy a little bit easier to, to understand from a code perspective. But then again, I'm not a Rust developer, so take that as you will. Um, but you can see here, this is your alternative option. And this was updated. I did a video about this about uh, a week ago, two weeks ago. Uh, so they both recently got decent sized updates as well. But today we talked about Firefox, again, available at Firefox. I think it was RS, wasn't it? Yeah, .rs. Uh, if you want to go ahead and check that out, it is a very interesting engine. Again, I don't think it is ready for production use, uh, but if you are willing to uh, put up with a, an evolving engine and you want to use the Rust language, it is definitely a solid option. And Rust 0.27, sorry, uh, Firefox 0.27 just released. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.